Hey everyone out there, YouTube land, Dan here from Geek Ass Radio doing another From the Long Box review. This is where I go through my collection, pick out a book and talk about it for a variety of different reasons. Maybe it's a book that impacted my fandom as a comic book reader. Maybe it's a book I just wanted to review. In this case, with Fantastic Four finally coming back to the pages of comics, but in a Fantastic Four mood, so I went back and read a number of key issues that I own, uh, and one that I actually recently owned and kind of decided to talk about them, and one of the ones that I actually just recently picked up for the first time was Fantastic Four The Trial of Reed Richards, which is uh, Fantastic Four 262. Uh, this came out in the 1980s. It's noted as one of the most, uh, one of the best single comic book issues, I think was on the list of one of the one, one comics to read before you die. So I thought I'd pick it up and read it, see if, it, if it's any good. You know, what is, you know, is it everything it's been built up to be? Uh, which is always a challenge to do, but what I found interesting right away was that, um, as you can see here, it actually begins with uh, the writer John Byrne on the cover having a conversation with the assistant editor uh, about the actual book that we're reading. And I think we have a tendency when we think of things being meta to be a very current phenomenon. It's like, all oh, meta is all about is today's comedy. It's such a new thing. But in reality, being meta was so much a part of comics since their you know, inception in a way. If you remember you know, reading some classic uh, X-Men around, you know, uh, once they re-ran with uh, new writers and during Chris Claremont's run and you had Jack Kirby and Stan Lee show up in different issues. And so this, you have that happening as well with uh, John Byrne being visited by the Watcher and taken to this location where Reed Richards is actually being put on trial for keeping uh, Galactus alive and saying if he, if he in fact is guilty of you know causing genocide throughout different galaxies because he didn't take out Galactus when he could and and that's really the, the gigantic premise of all this and it does really work well as an issue that you can pick up and read and understand um, from the get-go without even honestly reading past Galactus issues or knowing much about the Fantastic Four. Everything is kind of laid out well enough within this comic. Um, I, I will say, I don't know if the aspect of John Byrne being actually in this book adds a lot to it. It's a funny element, I guess, and makes you realize maybe this is taking place outside of continuity. I, I'm not sure, but it's, I don't know. I don't know if necessarily, if you remove that aspect of it, I don't think much of the story actually changes. Um, but he, he does at least work as a, a vice for the audience in a way, oddly enough, knowing that he's writing and drawing this, but, but still. And so what it begins with is these conversations happening of explaining why Galactus is the menace he is. And we have all different types of aliens and creatures explaining what Galactus did, what, what he caused, the, the horrors that he caused. And you know, the, the art's fantastic. Love this panel here of, of Reed Richards and Lalandra, who's basically running this, uh, running this trial um, as they determine if Reed Richards is actually guilty or not. And the biggest question then becomes, is Galactus evil? Is he in fact evil or is he a product of nature? Is he a natural phenomenon in a way? And that begins the, the really the back and forth between this. And you see uh, Reed Richards trying to find you know his place within this, explaining that yes, he, he did in fact allow Galactus to live, but he felt the necessity for it because of, of what that means basically you know it's it it starts as obviously this this focus on galactus and allowing him to live but in a way it's expanding beyond that asking you know it horrific things that do occur is there a natural order in a way or is a chaotic order what exactly you know what is the cause of this you know if can it be prevented should it be prevented um and you even have some some characters coming to to uh, lend his aid even Odin shows up Galactus himself eventually shows up and I do find this actually quite a fascinating read it, it's it does I think do what good Fantastic Four does and Reed Richards is somewhat of an interesting character because he's a man of science but this even touches into there's a, almost a religious element of him in a way maybe not religious but face based or, or something of that nature and how, how those cor correlate to one another and how they often com conflict as well um, and then getting into the history of Galactus how he was born where he came from and I don't know if this was the first time we learned of Galactus origin um, but we do kind of learn where he where he comes from how he started how he was you know in a way Galactus wasn't designed to be Galactus it was a random happening that occurred that led him to be Galactus but I it is a quite the book and it, it does ask a lot of intriguing questions and provides some answers uh, 
maybe the answers are a little too blunt, but I, I do find that idea of Galactus being good or evil is that actually is that you know where is that does that lie? I feel at like this place most people have come to the conclusion that he's not, but often because in stories he tends to be a good guy in, in some instances, like in Annihilation. Um, so his neutral status is not as what it once was. But certainly, you know, he's a man who's caused legitimately planets of people to be destroyed and killed. Um, d does he hold any judgment because of that? Um, so I, even I, I, as a Fantastic Four fan, this does everything a good Fantastic Four comic should do, bringing in those. I, I love cosmic creatures. I love Eternity. Uh, and, and first of all, the design is one of the best designs in all of comics, and it kind of rep representing the you know all all of life in a way. Um, and just how John Byrne was able to kind of put this all together, and then of course ending in the a rather humorous fashion in a way and the watcher playing a role and the watcher again is breaking his vow just to watch and ends up being like the defense lawyer for reed richard so i it is exactly what it says it's a good trial uh, of of a hero in taking kind of the the things we take for granted in superhero stories and looking at the, the logic behind them the morality behind them um, in a new and interesting way. Maybe in today's standard, we do this a lot in comics more so than we didn't, didn't did at the time, but I completely see why it gets the praise that it does. Um, would this go down as one of my, the best issues that I ever read? I, I don't necessarily know, maybe because I felt like some of the answers were, were too, uh, it came to those conclusions maybe a little too easy, but I, I at least thought the exploration was enjoyable to read and enjoyable to experience. So I, it's definitely, I think, uh, worthy of uh, it's one of a book i think that could spark a lot of conversation um good and bad well hopefully good but in, in the sense of where people lie within the idea of where galactus belongs or taking that idea and expanding it further to other aspects of it you know um so i'd be curious to know what other people's opinions of this comic are how many people have actually read it and enjoy it or other other key fantastic four issues it's been enjoyable just going through all these different fantastic four comics as you know for the first time for many of them or rereading them and make me wonder you know how how will this new run stack up against this? How, how how can you take a story like this and tell it in today's audience? Um, how can you get the essence of the Fantastic Four right? And do characters like the Fantastic Four, do, could they have a place in today? And I feel like reading a story like this, that is certainly the case because they're looking at some of the biggest questions. You know, these are, hu but at the same time, they're still human beings, but looking at dealing with cosmic level quandaries, which I don't think there's really other characters that do that to that level. The X-Men are usually dealing with the mutant problems. The Avengers, their, their quandaries are more so physical than they are uh, uh, physiological in, in a way, but the Fantastic Four tend to delve in both, which I think separates them. And I think considering the climate of today, they actually, I think, could have a good place. Um, so I, I'm really excited to see them come back. Uh, and uh, hopefully it'll be a great run. We've had a lot of mediocre runs. Uh, I went through some of the books, like I reread uh, the Mark Riller run or some of those issues. I thought I'd talk about them, but there's not much to say minus that that run is kind of forgettable. So, um, but yeah. So anyways, that's it for me for this week. If you look around, you should see some videos to click on. If you want to see more of my content or subscribe to this channel, leave my leave a comment below regarding your favorite Fantastic Four issue, and maybe I'll discuss it if I have it. Um, but other than that, just remember comics are for everyone. The key is finding the right one. Until next time, thanks for watching.